hello and good day to all attendees. Um, thank you for your, uh, for your time today um, um, attending the University of Tasmania's uh, business webinar session um, titled Bachelor of Business, a Transformed Accounting Major. So uh, my name is Ray and I am the International Student Recruiter for the University, but will be your host today. Um, I'm glad to have with me um, our esteemed panelists from the Tasmanian School of Business and Economics. I have um, Dr. Therese Fiddler, who is our Deputy Discipline Leader of Accountability and Accounting Major Coordinator. So Therese has more than 20 years of teaching experience with expertise across all financial accounting units, um, accounting for managers and sustainable uh, business. Um, our second uh, speaker panelist today is Dr. John McLaren, um, who is our senior lecturer in the taxation uh, at the University of Tasmania. Um, jo John has been coordinating taxation subject for many years at various university. And he has been a member of various research committee at different universities where he mentored staff with the objective of increasing research output. And lastly, I have Tim Milbank with me, which um, I believe a lot of you might want to speak to Tim because he helps to facilitate internship, industry engagement and career guidance for um, our students at the Tasmanian School of Business and Economics. So sh should you have any questions throughout the webinar session, um, just feel free to type it out um, in our chat, chat box or the Q&A box, and we will attend to them accordingly. So without further delay, I shall hand uh, the, the floor over to Therese. Um, yeah, Thank I you. hope you enjoy the session with us. That's lovely. I might just get you to... Um go forward a couple of slides if possible. So welcome everyone. Um, I'd like to speak just on behalf of uh, the unit coordinators, I guess, in the accounting major. And we're quite happy with the work that we've been doing recently, which is the transformation of the accounting major. And this has been informed by our accounting profession, other stakeholders, um, basically, what we're trying to do is make sure that your accounting major as part of your business degree is highly relevant to the industry that you want to be in. And I'll, I'll explain that relevance a little bit later on in, a, in another slide. But we embed a particular uniqueness um, of Tasmania into our degree. And it's really special. We make sure that we use uh, case studies. We use examples. Uh, in our material, we make sure that we're um, assessing you on local businesses and the implications of some of those businesses on our economy. But I don't want you guys to think that just because we are very much Tasmanian and we have a Tasmanian focus, that you can't apply this to your home countries. And it does give you an edge because you take away something special from Tasmania, but it's highly applicable, of course, uh, to your own environments as well and transferable. So we like to, in our degree, as part of our transformation, expose our students to real life business examples, including the challenges that, that are faced by these businesses. And of course, uh, exposing you to real life business situations um, is something that John and Tim, of course, will, will speak about as well. If I could just go to the next slide, please. So how did we transform this major? Because what I've given you is just, you know, the impetus, the, the reason for doing it. Well, one of the things that, that we really needed was to embed sustainability into our units and accountability into our units of the accounting major. And again, informed by the profession, not just because we thought it was a nice thing to do, we know the profession understands that there are really important jobs to be had in these areas. And we know that we can no longer in business just rely on financial information. We have to consider the impacts that our decisions um, have on other stakeholders, social impacts, also think about the environmental impacts. And we work towards sustainability uh, in all of our units. We have a, a common thread. 
Another major part of our transformation is that we embed soft skills. Our accounting professionals have told us that we need to do more in this area. So we know you guys are very good at grabbing the technical skills of accounting, but what we're suggesting and our profession is telling us is that we need to up the skills in things like oral communication. How should you speak to your client? That's what you'll be doing a lot of. Written communication. Can you write a good sentence? We all need reminding about that from time to time. Teamwork in your work, no matter what you do, even if it's not in accounting, you'll be working in teams, that's inevitable. What's the best, most effective way to work in those teams? What documentation should you be um, using in that teamwork environment? We need you to be critical thinkers. This is a soft skill that's overlooked quite often, but we need you to step back and actually problem solve and know where to get that information from. And another slide, please. So drilling down a little bit further into our transformation of the accounting major, what we did is we made sure we were place-based. I mentioned this but before, but what does it actually mean? It means that, for example, my students in the first accounting unit are looking at a local aquaculture organisation called TASAL. They're understanding about the sustainability reports and they're critically thinking about this and assessing whether they think the reports are a true reflection of what's happening in the environment of that organisation. We embed the relevance. As mentioned, we tell you, um, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you studying it? Who said it was important? Not just your teachers, but your profession and other stakeholders. We might explain to you why is it important to write a good sentence? And, you know, take you right back to that great uh, construction of a sentence, then transform that into perhaps a report, et cetera, and just take you all the way through with great communication skills. We've mentioned sustainability and accountability and why that's important and soft skills and why that's important. We've realised that we need to link you with your industry. This is so important with students. We need to make sure you have access to industry leaders here in Tasmania, business professionals, the accounting profession as a whole. And one of the ways that we do that, uh, well, well, I certainly have um, done that with the accounting major and, and Tim and again, John will speak about their ways, but one of the ways in the accounting major is that we have an enrichment program. And I will speak about that um, on the next slide, if I can, please. So the enrichment program links you with these professionals, with your industry stakeholders. And one part of the enrichment program, it's not limited to this at all, are the masterclasses that we hold. And we hold two of these each semester. So for example, we've had the head of KPMG, Carl Harris, speak to us about what other skills are really important for accountants. Again, knowing that you can very easily pick up the technical side, but what else do you need? And he spoke about resilience. He spoke about being an active listener. And, and it was really, really useful for students. And then, of course, they got to spend time with Carl talking about how best to be employed and, you know, what are some wonderful pathways that he could offer. In a few weeks, I've got Joss Fenton, who is a CPA, and his business is slightly different, of course, from where Carl works, and he looks at and deals with not-for-profit organisations. He's coming to the classroom, and we invite all our Bachelor of Business students, and he'll be speaking about the difference between the profit organisations and the not-for-profit organisations accounting and, and what's involved in there. He'll also be speaking about just what is a day in the life of account an accountant. There's not many people that get to actually understand exactly what an accountant does day by day and how his day is structured and what his week looks like. So he's giving you an insight to his, uh, his world, which will be lovely. We also have guest lectures. Now, these guest lectures could come into your workshops or perhaps be on recording and we embed that onto our Milo site, which is our learning uh, platform. So we make sure that we're very up to date, we're very relevant, place-based, et cetera. And of course, you have that connection with your industry. 
And I think I'll, I'll hand that um, back to our host. Thank you. Thank you, Therese. So um, uh, the, the next session will be um, by Tim. Thank you, Ray. Um, and thank you very much, uh, Therese, for a great introduction uh, and, and John as well for, for having me today. Um, look, it's, it's absolutely fantastic to see um, this, this brand new program uh, come to light. Um, we know how uh, quickly the accounting and finance professions uh, are changing. Um, and so we obviously want to be able to change with that. We want to be able to offer really great experiences for our students um, and, of course, reflective, reflective sorry, of the skills and, and, and the interests of both our industry partners, um, employment outcomes, but also, of course, um, students' passions and interests as well. So it is wonderful that we get to offer uh, the, an internship opportunity within our College of Business and Economics. Um, we facilitate around 120 students each year and roughly about half of those are in the accounting and finance uh, uh, professions, which is fantastic. Um, we get a chance to see uh, real Tasmanian and national and international brands and organisations uh, develop uh, real world projects, uh, put them forward to the, to the college, to our students, and, and we get the opportunity to obviously um, have students in, embedded with, the, with those projects, uh, work towards them, um, learn what it's like to be in an Australian business, uh, learn what it's like to communicate in Australian business, um, network and, and really put context to what uh, Therese and the rest of the uh, accounting professionals uh, teach throughout the course. Within this, the, the corporate internship itself comes uh, an eligibility requirement. So roughly around halfway through our, our course and, and our studies, uh, you'll be have the option to engage with the internship program, where again, you'll be uh, paired and matched up with a, a project and a placement and an organisation that is uh, relevant to your field and interests. So we capture your passions. We wanna make sure that we, we get that alignment as best as possible. Um, you'll gain course credit for that, for that process, which is lovely. Um, it's gonna be a part of your degree. Um, it's gonna be a part of your academic transcript when you go through. Another really important element is that it's not intensive. So we know that you're very busy as students um, and we wanna make sure that we fit in these experiences uh, around the rest of your stud studies, around your social lives and extracurricular activities as well. So it's usually one or two days uh, a week over the course of the semester that you're engaging with the organization uh, and working towards that placement, which is fantastic. Uh, next slide, thank you. Everyone. So I thought I'd provide a couple of uh, recent examples uh, from some of our uh, accounting students. Um, we, it's, it's, it's a really, lovely process we have because the, the projects and placements that do come through uh, for us are legitimate real world projects. These are uh, big organizations that approach us and, and looking for talented students to come through and help, help them out. Um, and often using that as a bit of a recruitment tool as well. So uh, May started her placement last semester. Uh, she worked with Hazel Brothers uh, Civil Construction. Um, they are now one of the, the biggest civil construction companies in, in Australia. They have multi, multi-million dollar contracts with um, councils and governments and, and private enterprises all around the country. Um, and within that, um, May was able to conduct a whole range of accounting activities, so including you know, management accounting, using MYOB, fast prep, uh, invoice data analysis, and a whole raft of other um, uh, tasks and activities for the organisation. Um, May did so well uh, that she was offered some, some casual work ongoingly uh, from, from that internship last semester, which is just a, the perfect outcome. We love to see that. Um, as well as traditional accounting, uh, Maria Zhao was um, engaged with the CSIRO. So that is the, the Australian body for scientific industrial research. Uh, it's obviously a national organisation. It has thousands of staff and a lot of um, places, uh, workplaces around the country. Um, and uh, Maria was able to actually engage in, in a very new form of, uh, of accounting that's very, um, very nascent and it's, it's still being put together. And there's a lot of research around it coming out now. Um, and that's, that's around natural capital accounting. So thinking about, as uh, Therese highlighted earlier, um, about the triple bottom line, 
what's the sustainability outcomes of the inputs that we put into our, our goods and services and, and, and how do we make that more efficient? How do we look at circular economies? How do we look at sustainability? And that certainly links back to what Tasmania is all about and, and certainly UTAS. Um, within that, she, Maria presented to a, a raft of, um, sorry, um, raft of stakeholders in, in forestry, in government, um, and there was probably about 50 attendees in, in that uh, Zoom call. So it was really important. We have, again, partners with Deloitte, KPMG, CPA, and, and a lot of uh, local accounting firms, which is great. Next one now, thanks, Ray. Um, so the internship program is, is an elective unit of study. So students are welcome to kind of apply for the program. It's not a compulsory element of your course, but it is fantastic. It really gives you an opportunity to contextualize your, your studies, what you've learned, and put that into practice and context. Um, you get the chance to really build networks, relationships with uh, Australian business people and leaders. Um, and you really get to kind of trial what's it like to be you know, a graduate accountant. So we wanna give you that, that exposure and experience before you become a graduate yourself. Uh, within that, Therese mentioned, look, we're really interested in improving those soft skills, employability skills. So we now know that um, our, our employers and our um, organizations we work with, they value the, the employability and soft skills just as much as the technical or hard skills that you're learning from the course itself. So with this opportunity, it provides a lot of experience in that, which we love. Um, obviously, experiencing Australian workplace culture is, is fantastic, um, especially for our international students. I think uh, often you know, the international students gain more from it because uh, the, the exposure to the culture, what it's like to communicate in a, in a professional organisation within a, in Australia, I think it uh, yeah, can, be, can be very valuable. Uh, next slide, right? And just a, a final slide here, I suppose, I um, wanted just to highlight that, uh, look, we're, we're really proud that we, a majority of our placements uh, each year um, are actually from with international students. So we offer placements for undergraduate, postgraduate, international, domestic, um, but uh, more often than not, a majority of our students each year uh, are international students. And we think that that's fantastic. Um, we love the opportunities we can provide and we love uh, developing them for our students. Um, the work integrated learning is, is way beyond just internships and, and John will uh, soon talk about the tax clinic, which is a, a fantastic program as well. But there's opportunities where, as Therese mentioned, you're getting professionals and leaders within uh, Tasmanian business coming in and talking to you about what's expected uh, as becoming a professional in, in Australian business culture. So I think that's, that's kind of uh, about it. Uh, everyone so thank you very much for your attention and, and appreciate um coming on today so thank you um and so up next we have uh john uh who will be sharing with us uh about the tax clinic at the university of tasmania look i am um, as well as being a, a, a tax academic i i'm also uh, in the role of manager of the tax clinic and uh We've been operating for uh, over two years now. Uh, we were part of the 10 universities selected by the Australian government to uh, establish a tax clinic whereby we would uh, engage uh, students in the running and the uh, provision of tax advice to community members who were, who had low income or uh, had very little knowledge of taxation law and had not been using a uh, professional tax agent. So as part of the National Tax Clinic Program, we, we've been established, whereby we take uh, both interns and volunteers, and the majority of our students are in fact international students, and also postgraduate students. So we've established two particular internship subjects based around the tax clinic. And, uh, and over the last uh, two years, we've had uh, in excess of uh, 70 students per year, both as interns and as volunteers. And we've probably dealt with in excess of two or 300 clients in Tasmania um, with their own personal uh, tax issues, 
um, lodging tax returns, but also a, a large number of our clients are wanting to establish small businesses or they have established small businesses, but they just need further advice on their tax or taxation obligations, including not only income tax, but the goods and services tax. So next slide, thank you. So look, what, um, what we're about is, is, is probably two main focuses. Um, one is giving back to the community, helping the community of Tasmania in terms of educating uh, the public about their taxation obligations, increasing their knowledge of taxation, helping them to, to meet their compliance requirements. But our other focus is very much on students, particularly in terms of the practical experience. So not only increasing their practical knowledge of taxation law, but also developing their soft skills. So when they uh, meet clients, uh, taking notes about the particular meetings, providing tax advice, asking questions, also researching particular areas of taxation law that may be uh, very, uh, very important for a range of clients. I mean, to give you one example, this morning, we had a client wanting to know about the taxation law that applied to what we call granny flats. That is where you, you build a little apartment in the, in the back of your home, and you uh, allow your elderly parents to live there. So what are the taxation consequences of something that's really as basic as that? So again, the students were able to do the research and provide the client with the correct advice. So again, as I say, we're very much focused on, on the uh, practical work experience. I think there's probably one more slide to go, is there? Um, so students are also able to count their practical experience, their time at the tax clinic towards their practical component for uh, becoming a full CPA Australia member. And I'm able to sign off on that being a, a, a CPA. But uh, the other thing that uh, we've done is all of the tax clinics throughout Australia have surveyed the students, uh, both at the beginning of their experience in the internship or being volunteers, and then at the end of the uh, program. And the research has shown that international students have in fact uh, obtained better um, efficacy, uh, better experience, better levels of confidence um, as a result of, of being involved in the tax clinic than in fact our domestic students. So it's, um, it's, it's proven to be a really important uh, component in, in their study and we are expanding it. We're, we're now embedding students in community centres, in libraries. Um, um, we, we also have a program where students go and talk to school children about their tax obligations. So we're, we're expanding all the time the, uh, the number of students who can be involved and the, uh, and the type of experience that only Tasmania can, uh, can provide. So that's uh, it in terms of the tax clinic. Thank you. Thank you, Therese, John, and, and Tim for, for that sharing with us today. Um, so um, I'm happy to open the floor to, to any questions from our attendees. Uh, just feel free to type them in um, in our Q&A box or uh, the chat box so that we can uh, attend to them uh, accordingly. Um, so I guess my, my 
I'll start off with one of my questions first. <laughs> for the tax clinic, um, uh, is there uh, like a selection criteria for, for students if let's say they would like to participate? Look, I suppose the, the only basic criteria is that they have in fact studied taxation law already as part of their degree. Um, clearly, if they're a graduate and they're, uh, they're working with us as a volunteer, there are no issues. Um, look, we, we're trying to take as many um, students as we can. So we really are looking at expanding and not creating hurdles so that we, we prevent students from being able to uh, gain that experience. Thank you for that, John. Um, so I have a question that got sent to here that's asking, is it hard for students to um, do a startup uh, a business uh, in Tasmania? Um, it isn't. And, and in fact, um, that's probably raises one of the things that, under the Australian taxation system is there is no, there are no very strict requirements in terms of operating a business or simply being a, an employee, a worker for, a, for an employer. Um, and I think that creates a lot of confusion um, with students, particularly when they come into the clinic and they're dealing with, um, with clients who want to start a business and they say, oh, well, you know, do I have to get these permissions and, and uh, what are the you know, what's the situation? But it is, look, it's very simple in Australia. Um, I mean, obviously, if you want to create a company or a partnership or a trust, it's slightly more complicated. But part of our job is to educate people in, in terms of what is required. And, and, and we have an ongoing relationship with those clients. So, so each year they come back if they have more problems. And uh, and we and we uh, we help them that way. Um, I remember uh, when I was uh, 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 at the the school uh, two years back, and there was a sharing of one of the year three bachelor uh, of business students who uh, managed to start up the first uh, bubble tea business uh, in Tasmania. Uh, uh, just wondering how how. You know, uh, was um, did, did the student you know come back to the university with a lot of help and requests and <laughs> along the way before she managed to get her bubble tea startup? Look, I think I remember that particular client. Um, it, uh, it it's it's uh, look, you're right. They 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 did come back a few times, and 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 that was good because. In, you know, you don't want to overload someone with, with lots of technical taxation requirements or legal requirements. But look, it, um, it worked out very well. And, um, and, and look, we, we really encourage, um, and particularly many of our small business startups are by international students. And it's, and it's just great to see that level of entrepreneurship. But look, we, um, we, we, we just sort of go through what is required up front. And then we say, okay, now in three months time, um, if you need some help, come back or come back sooner. And, and look, it's, um, it's a great relationship. And then we can say, well, look, now we'll refer you to a, 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 an accountant to take you through the next step because we're very much at that at that uh, at, at the startup process. Um, so this session, uh, 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 at answering Amir Aziz's um, question uh, at the chat. Uh, this session will uh, you will be able to find it from our University of Tasmania uh, YouTube website. Uh, so uh, feel free to to uh, visit our uh, YouTube page and um, you will be able to see this webinar session again. 
any other questions from from the floor that you know you would like to ask our um, you would like to ask Therese or, or John or Tim just feel free to to let us know um I guess uh, uh I, Tim, do, do we know like how many uh, students uh, from our Bachelor of Business and Master's program uh, actually participate in the uh, work uh, uh, integrated learning program? Yeah, so the, the corporate internship program, we have around um, 120 students come through each year, which is um, yeah, between 100 and 120. So we facilitate over semester one, um, semester two and also the accelerated study period three, which is the, um, yeah, it's obviously uh, just for the accelerated study business program. Um, and yeah, so uh, really good numbers, um, but, you know, we're always looking, we'll try, yeah, as John kind of um, want to mirror John, um, we're always, we always want to up those numbers. We want to see our students get some great opportunities. <laughs> Are they usually just within Tasmania or um, it's across Australia? Very good question. Um, we actually just, um, we had a, an exchange student who has just completed an internship with the Swedish, Swedish Space Corporation in, uh, in Sweden. So um, look, we, we want to facilitate these types of placements. We want to make sure that we can put our eyes over it and they're going to be really important. Uh, learning experiences, but no, um, we've worked with uh, people in Sydney, in Melbourne. Um, we've currently got a, a a data analysis company from Perth who are taking on two students this semester. So, um, look, of course, it makes sense. A majority of our, our organisations in Tasmania, but um, no, we we don't want that to to limit those experience, experiences. Great to know. Um, well, I guess if uh, there's no other. Uh, questions from the floor, um, I guess we can wrap up the session today. Um, if any of you have uh, any questions after this uh, webinar session, just feel free to drop us an email um, at, at uh, yours.study at utas.edu.au and we will get back to you as soon as possible. And once again, thank you all for your time today. Um, thank you, John, Tim and Therese uh, for, for the wonderful sharing today. It has been great. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome and thank you.